doing the audio check. Can you hear me? I'm not able to hear the screen. That sounds like a Reza. If you want to join the queue, that's great. Your timing is perfect. Um, welcome back. This is our second uh, tease session. Um, we uh, broke in the middle of a the last uh, discussion from the, the previous session. But uh, first, before we can get uh, we can resume, we have to do our normal administrivia. Um, uh, we're required and asked to always show our note, note well. Uh, this is to ensure that all participants are aware of the process and procedures that govern how we operate. Um, that covers uh, both uh, the the uh, what is uh, discussed here, and that it becomes part of our permanent record, and it's recorded and made available. It also governs how we interact with each other. Uh, next slide, please. And um, our leadership has oops, uh, just go to the the, the one after. Our, our leadership has asked to emphasize um, our our. Uh, that we have a code of conduct that's covered in BCP 54 and, um, you know, to keep it short, it's, uh, you know, please be respectful and courteous of others, even in, when engaged in um, intense technical uh, uh, discussions, which are, of course, encouraged. Um, the agenda, now on to our agenda. Um, so we broke in the middle of, or in the middle of uh, slot four, um, which is okay because we actually had 40 minutes of open time right now. So we're gonna give uh, Adrian up to 40 minutes if you'd like to take it. And um, so we're gonna start with that and continue. And then all the other slots are going to be just pushed further down in our um, uh, two hours. And with that, um, back to Adrian, and we had Tarek and Reza in queue, and they're back in queue. So thank you. Um, while the slide comes up, um, it occurred to me during the break that uh, I may be defending the current text a bit too forcefully. Uh, I'm the pen holder, and it's it's your text. Uh, so uh, what we actually need to do is try to get some uh, consensus on these these points uh that said i propose that we just take Tarek and reza on this slide and then make some movement through the rest of the slides in the hope of uh, of, of getting through them so uh Tarek. great edwin uh, to thank you uh you know getting clarity on these things uh you're doing a great job highlighting uh what makes sense? Um, my, my, my question now is uh, about the connectivity matrix ID. Uh, and th there is a need uh, that to group multiple of these connectivity matrices, if you want to call them, or the way we call them, um, so that they uh, match a specific filter criteria. Um, for example, if I have uh, still on point to point basic connectivity matrix, I have two of those, and I, you know, I want to associate a class of service with them. Uh, do I need to have an uh, overgrouping of these two? And uh, is that uh, what is the uh, thought, uh, the thinking is? I think it is likely. I'm, I'm, I'm hesitant here because you're moving from how we describe the slice to the customer uh and then you're, you're you're going from that to how you would actually start to realize and to deliver the slice in the network now i i understand that the second is important uh and it is it seems to me very likely that there is a need to um group together in delivery um matrices or slices that have um, the same or very similar uh, service characteristics. Okay, thank you. Reza. Uh, uh, thanks again uh, for the session. Uh, one comment and one question. I guess from the uh, connectivity type uh, traffic uh, that we see here, it's also, it's good uh, to, to consider that one as two group of unicast or multicast. 
because, for example, point to point in this case is unicast, whereas other one are potentially multicast. So this is one aspect that also maybe can clarify the type of the traffic we have. And uh, the, there was some comment that we can group it into two categories, point to point and point to multipoint, and other are the kind of subset of that. We, more or less, uh, I think, uh, in my opinion, this is uh, correct because at the end, we, the, when I go to my session about MBI, the modeling, we basically retouch some of this aspect uh, that we have here. And another uh, the comment uh, is about the connectivity metrics. When we say metrics, so by definition, metrics means multiplicity, multiple row that, and in this case, metrics, if we are clear about that means an x and y when x is sender y is receiver i just want to make sure that we are on the same category because we talk about the something and the definition of that is not 100 percent clear vn talks about connectivity metrics the way that x and y they can send and i think it might be a good idea to clarify that in the framework that very clearly what we mean with the connectivity metrics thank you yeah i get you um I think that's uh, that's important, <clears throat> and uh, you're also right that that getting alignment here with the um, the NBI or the the service Yang model is uh, also fundamental. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to bow to the working group and continue then. So, uh, uh, Guillen. Um. Yes, just a few comments from my, I think some of the other, I guess, discussions on mailing list about this topic. So just, so I, I think um, what was mentioned just earlier, I think the grouping of unicast, you know, flows and then multicast, but then as well, you know, having that, that delineation in the grouping, but then also, you know, in the description, I think, and it was, I think it may have been commented on as well, like when you look at the functional categories, and then you talk about C to C. So like, let's say the network slice controller, you know, this is kind of the overall provisioning of the uh, slices. But when you think about provisioning of the slices, the action is happening on the PE, not the CE. But then you have the, but then you have two pieces of it. You have the CE, which the, the uh, provider side is seamless to the CE. He has its SLA and SLO, and then the PE is actually doing the provisioning. So when you look at it, you know, just like the definition of each each one, uh, you're 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 actually defining the PE role, but then but then the actual description has this the endpoint communication to C to C communication matrix. So just a point that you know when you're when you're reading it, it does look a little bit confusing because you're actually talking about the PE role and actually provisioning by the controller, but then but then you're actually talking about the sending and receiving like the endpoints, CE endpoints. Uh, another, another comment also, and I think someone had mentioned, like is as since when you're, when you think of a, a, a single connection or connectivity, uh, it's CE to CE, point to point. And then like, I guess when you think about a uh, point to multi-point, like say multicast, and l let's say like a, a, a source to leaf, you know, sub LSP, Everything, I think the building block of any communication is a single unicast flow. So let's say hypothetically, if you took a, a single unicast flow, so like a point to point uh, flow and use that SLA and SLO, and then you can actually use that as a mirror building block to build really any um, any um, point to multi-point or multi-point multi, multi to multi-point uh, communication matrix. Thank you. Yeah, okay, heard that. Um, Greg. Hello. Um, I think that, well, at least my interpretation of what connectivity metrics is, is uh, not related to uh, data flows that are traversing it. So, because uh, for example, if it's point to multi-point, uh, it's not restricted to carry only multicast traffic. It can be a unicast. Uh, so that's... 
in in my in my mental you know uh, picture uh, deeds are different yes and that's what took us into the 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 definition of uh, any to any in as much as um we were trying to previously we were trying to represent that multicast flow in p2mp not the not the potential of unicast flows um uh, okay I, I, all i can say is this this needs to go round um uh, the the whole loop again and we, we need to to bash it out and i'm not sure that now is the the time uh but i have heard that there are many different opinions about what we should be doing here and we we've got to drive that forward and uh, not to be outdone uh what do we got uh Guillen, are you still in the queue oh. sorry let me let me remove myself Okay, Jeff. Sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah. So uh, I think it's important to really define where the boundary is, right? In point to multi point, C will still be sending single copy where P might be replicating if it's replicated traffic. Think about layer to service and flooding, right? Uh, number two, it's not necessarily traffic, it's the connectivity model you describe, commonly known as point to cloud, cloud to point, or cloud to cloud. And it defines SLOs, and even so, you might be sending traffic to everybody, amount of traffic in total could be well defined, right? So if you had additional receiver, you might be actually running out of your quota ascending to cloud. So I think we are really confusing this too. Yes. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to fold all this in and try to come up with a thread on the list to um, to drive this discussion further. So next slide, please. We finally made it. <laughs> Yay. Um, yeah. So other changes that happened in 05. Um, uh, and this will come back still to the whether we agree on the definition of, of connectivity matrix, but we had a, a debate about could you have more than one matrix per slice, and we wanted to allow the operator to choose uh, one slice per matrix or multiple matrices per slice, uh, and that's what we've settled on at the moment. It may change with the definition of matrix. We had then some uh, debate about what is a service definition and um, polished that. The main issue coming out of it um, was the, the connectivity per slice, which we just talked about, uh, and um, what is an endpoint? And that was issue five, uh, and there was a figure at the interim which has found its way into the draft um to define the different possible positions of endpoints in ce um at the ce's port at the pe's port or in the pe and to add to that we added this thing called an ancillary ce to catch the idea of a service function which might be somewhere inside the provider's network more on that uh, later um we uh, added a figure on the realization process um, uh, and that picked up some, some text from Med, Joel and John Drake. Um, the recent email uh, exchange on that on the list, which is saying that um, these components are fine in the figure, but there need to be some clearer text uh, describing what they are. So that's easy. Uh, issue seven on the workflow was uh, agreed to make no further change um, because the workflow is pretty much these things have to happen, but in any order. And then uh, there were also a couple of editorials in it. Next slide. Oh, we're rumping along. 
Uh, so this takes us into the further issues. Um, uh, and uh, what's needed is an editorial pass. Um, some there's some really stale text in there uh, that I think can be taken out and there's a bit of duplication there are a couple of emails um, uh, review comments uh, kicking around Lou A for example sent comments um, and that needs to be factored in uh, and um, I have this open question on how we define endpoints we've got endpoints networks slice endpoints customer edge and i think i want to get down to either service demarcation point or service ac access point service access point uh, sorry service attachment point service attachment point um is popping up at the moment in the ops area working group where there's a yang model that is intended to apply to L3 SM and L2 SM uh, and other services as well. And it might be really neat if we could be uh, consistent with that. Uh, so again, that'll be a, a posting to the list. And I think resolving that might actually help us with our network matrix discussion. Um, what else have I got kicking around? Um, uh, next slide is, is on converging with 8309, and then there's a slide for technology agnostic, and as I said, editorials from various people. Um, and then I think some, some worked examples for simple services and mapping those to connectivity matrices may really uh, help. So let's go to the next slide. Um, and this is really about, do we say NBI and SBI? And uh, it's a long-term issue across quite a lot of uh, SDN-based stuff is that um, my um, southbound interface may be your northbound interface and, and calling it uh, NBI or SBI can get confusing. Um, so a proposal from Med here was to try to align with 8309 um, and, and, and reference the existing service models uh, and then use um, the same terminology across all IETF network level sort of services. Um, I think the NBI is pretty straightforward. We can talk about it as a IETF network slice service interface. The SBI is a little more uh, debatable. We have to decide, is it a network model or is it a network configuration model um, mapping to uh, the 8309 terminology? And here is Lue with an opinion. So hopefully you can hear you can hear me better this time. Yeah. Okay. In the IETF concept, why the, I mean, there's a IETF controller considered for the network. You're adding another IETF slice controller, even though you have a higher layer of slice orchestrator. I just I'm trying to understand that IETF network slice controller. What does it do that I can't get from a orchestrator or a controller in the bottom? Um. So the thing about orchestrators is they, you get them sort of at every layer. So the figure on the right here is um, maybe the one to look at. And, and in this picture, the orchestrator is up there in customer space. So the customer is working out what um, slices they want and then is issuing the slice service request. So as an operator, you you don't have that slice orchestrator you have the um the service request reaching your controller or your well i think it's called the network's slice controller in the uh, in in the uh in the main document back on the line but the way i look at it is i understand i have to build a network slice orchestrator that is not specific to a domain 
my, and, and this is we can discuss further when you get to the IETF slash control, do I need really a controller or maybe a module within my current controller that can handle any slice requests? But that's something, I mean, I see some people coming online, so maybe they have opinions. <laughs> Yeah, and that, that is exactly the, the question, and that's kind of why the, the figure on the, the right, the figure three, bundles those as uh, all inside one controller, and then actually how it's partitioned uh, in software um, is kind of a, a, a an implementation deployment choice. Okay, Kariti. Been a while. Um, so the the terminology that um, was used uh, in the L3 VPN service model is not one that I'm thrilled with because um, everything is a service model. Um, but customer and uh, network is definitely one way of doing it. Um, you very rightly point out that I mean there are some drafts now which are the L3 VPN network models which are not yet the device models, but but they are a network-wide view of how this might get implemented. And then you need one more conversion as you have the network controller to say, this is what actually goes on a device. So, but, you know, I know it's uh, maybe a little bit gimmicky, but calling them intent model and implementation model might be uh, helpful because you know, not, your North Bond is my South Bond. Your, uh, I mean, you you have all these orchestrators. So if you say customer, where does the customer really come in? The customer actually might come in even above all this. So the idea that you have a model that abstracts away from the implemented implementation details. So if you say here are the SLOs, I don't know how you do it, but make my network. Uh, uh, meet my my uh, SLOs or my SLEs, uh, m or make their network uh, meet these. SLOs. So in a way, you have a, a thing that says this is what I would like, and then you have something that says this is how it's going to be implemented. Um, and I think that's maybe a little less uh, sort of relative than northbound, southbound, or customer and network. Um, I don't know. I, I agree with you that we need more uniform te uh, terminology across all the service models, but um, I'm just struggling with it, and that's just my current idea. Yeah, uh, and it's it's certainly true that we stumbled around for a while on the definition of customer because there's a there's a tendency to think of customer as the the absolute sort of end user or the person paying the bill. Uh, exactly. where 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 what we've defined in this document is a customer is the the person who makes uh, is the entity if you like that makes the request for the service but um we can we can look at that again and certainly the if if there's a robust definition of intent um uh, better than what the super working group failed to do then we we should certainly look at whether we can glue that in Okay, thanks. Kiran. Just a clarification question that uh, you have only downward arrows for the configuration. That is intentional, I guess. Uh, you do not select any runtime or dynamic state for the configurations. Well, you'll notice that figure two has got arrows in both directions, and they are the same arrows. So, um, uh, no, that's just inconsistent documentation. Okay. Lewis. So, actually, I was going to bring up the same comment about configuration. We should think of that as bidirectional, even though people tend to say configuration is unidirectional, but that's good. Um, the other thing is, I think you know, it would be useful in um, the alignment. If you really are going to head to tight alignment with 8309, is uh, uh, you know, um, look at their use of orchestrator versus controller. Because, for example, they call that middle box another orchestrator. 
And on one hand, it's really nice to be aligned with an RFC. On the other hand, um, if the terminology used it causes more confusion, um, it's okay not to follow it. Yeah, point taken. I'll talk to the author of uh, 8309 about that. <laughs> Uh, Lue. Yeah, just to confirm your thought on the endpoints, you're right. I mean, it could be the customer had the endpoints. Uh, we can have infrastructure endpoints. An example like a CUDU can have customer traffic, but their control plane traffic needs to be treated differently. So the endpoint could be anywhere, right? Could be in the customers, could be on the operator's network. Uh, it depends on what, if it needs any kind of specific or special treatment than what's normally offered. And by the way, and I know a lot of people mention QoS. I always think QoS is always there, regardless if you're slicing or not. So that protection is always there. I, I normally, when I look at it, I don't attach QoS to slicing. It helps within the slicing scope, but I don't know if it's, some people think QoS is slicing. Uh, personally, you know, just my personal opinion, I don't think it is, you know, one for one. Yeah, okay, those are, those are both helpful points. And I think that the um, the embedded endpoint ties in with Jeff's comment on um, uh, point to cloud and, and things like that um, for the SLOs. That's correct, thanks. Okay, next slide. I assume Lou is not still in the queue, he's just, he likes waving. Um, so uh, there was a question uh, on the list uh, asking about what's uh, what it means to say technology agnostic. Um, uh, and so there are a couple of points here. We, we certainly know that how the service is provided belongs to um, the, the operator and not the customer. Uh, and we know that the same service, in other words, what the customer sees as a service could be provided in multiple ways uh, according to operator preferences or according to uh, technology that's available. But the traffic supplied by the customer is, um, a specific technology. That is, it could depend on the encoding on the attachment circuit. Um, uh, and uh, therefore, there is some form of technology specific aspect of a network slice service. And the um, wrongly named um, attachment circuits are of a specific technology. So uh, the AC is part, if the AC is part of the service and it is in some of our models, then there is a technology specific aspect, uh, even to the point of the AC itself being sliced. So we have a choice. Um, we could clarify this by stating all of these points, calling it all out or we could simply remove the discussion of um, agnosticism. And my preference here is to say um, what, what's quoted here, the service is agnostic to the technology in the underlay network and leave it at that. And I pause a beat while nobody comes to the microphone, which, ah, hooray, good, Louis. So I support your opinion because the way you look at it is inside on inside the network, you can use whatever, you know, it's it's about the what's on the house, right? So you can use whatever technology you want. It's agnostic. You can do your slice. And however, to receive that endpoint that's coming from a different domain, I agree. That's a technology specific. When we were looking at it, we were looking at the F1 interface, the N3, the N6. And, I, you know, in none of those, we were really agnostic. We were. But to your point, as soon as we identify where the slice or what is the slice, the rest of it becomes technology agnostic. So uh, I, hopefully I said the same thing, but I support that view. Lovely, thanks. And Kariti. Goes back to the intent versus implementation. Intent, um, you want to stay away from how you do it. Um, so you say, this is my connectivity matrix, this is my requirements. I don't care how you do it. So I think I'm echoing what Louis just said. And so the agnosticism 
I don't know if I put too many S's in there, is um, with respect to how you implement it. Yes, yes. I think that's that that was the point of the original text. Is it's just the original text wasn't clear enough about where that agnostic boundary was. So um, I will try to tidy that. Brilliant, thank, thank you. you. Next slide, then. Okay, so other issues. I'm going to say let's not raise other issues here and now because uh, otherwise we will overflow. Please send to the list, and I will also try to capture what we've already covered in this meeting as issues on the list. And then next slide. So uh, my plan is to uh, get another pass of this during November um, and obviously raise the issues uh, that have been described. There's enough going on that I think we um, have to um, push this out probably by an extra revision. But uh, I think we are, with 06, we will be close to a point where I'm calling on you all to do a, a pretty thorough review, preferably during this calendar year, so that we can start to tidy up all of the remaining issues in uh, January uh, and February and maybe be ready for uh, a last call before the next ITF meeting. That would be my hope because this document is kind of important for progressing everything else and if we can't get consensus on it soon we'll be slowing down our other work. Um, if I may, given there's what, 11 minutes, can I share my desktop and share a slide on the v VTN, uh, sorry, the VPN plus and slicing discussion? I will ask to share screen. Mm, all the slots are taken. So we need Pavantu. <laughs> Actually, I'll do it. There we go. Yes, I really want to share my screen. Really, really, really. And if it's working, yeah, it is working. You can, oh, come on, share away. Hopefully, you can see a PowerPoint slide. Not yet. La la la. All right, so it's giving me a choose what to share, and here is a grayed out button where you can only cancel. Maybe, maybe bit... cancel and retry. Yeah. You click on that uh, screen above that uh, grayed uh, button. Yeah. All right, here we are. I love it when it does that. Cascade, right. You've now got it as soon as Meteco actually distributes it. Changing topics on us. Well, yeah, this is still slicing. And, um, uh, and since you said maybe we can squeeze this in at the end and since i'm talking and i've got the slide i thought i might so let's do it at the end okay all right i'll come back later all right thanks uh in which case i think i'm finished and hey, you can Adrian, run... thank, you. thank you very much for uh running the last uh, almost hour and uh thank you all to who contributed both here and to the work uh, it's really important, and we, uh, you know, appreciate the timeline and pushing to get it out. And uh, thanks again, Re Reza. You're up. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, hi everyone. On behalf of the co-authors of uh, NBI draft, I'm going to present uh, lots of discussion that uh, I'm going to talk about. It's already discussed in the previous session. Uh, you know, connectivity metrics and everything related to that. So, this, and 
the considered whatever is discussed here is just from the modeling perspective. We are not going to go to the deep dive of this uh, assumption is the framework is going to cover that one. Next slide, please. We are going to talk about connectivity metrics modeling, whatever is a kind of summary of where we are right now and whether or not this is uh, agreed upon. And there are some other the discussion that uh, uh, needs investigation, uh, namely network slice connection group, introduction of tag, and how the uh, you know, realization relates to the underlay. So these are some of the topics that uh, will be discussed today. Next, please. Regarding the connectivity metrics, uh, so it's just a kind of summary of whatever we just uh, uh, seen so far. Why we need connectivity metrics, why we need multiple connectivity metrics, again from the modeling perspective. If this is the case, how we can model it and the, how basically the um, type of the traffic will address or will be included in the model. So we summarize everything into two models. The first slide is option one. This is something that is uh, included. Uh, yeah, if you go to the next slide, please. Uh, so why we need multiplicity of the uh, connectivity matrices. So these are two reasons that uh, you know, it's kind of summary of whatever uh, that we deduct from the discussion mailing list and uh, draft. It might be more reasons, or there might be some other reasons that some of them is not really included here. But the idea here is we need multiplicity of the connectivity matrices because one network slice endpoint, again, everything is from the technology agnostic perspective. One network slice endpoint can send traffic with a different type, consider blue, red, and green as a three connectivity matrices that we have. So one endpoint is sending different type of the traffic potential to different type of the uh, NSE. And in the case of red and green, you will see same endpoint on the left hand side sending to, to the same the endpoint on the right hand side, but potentially the SLO is different. And we consider every the technology a specific term like class of service, type of services, everything from the modeling perspective we, is considered as SLO or SLA there in this case. So the potentially there are different SLO that's supported and two reasons that we came up why we need multiplicities here and why we need this because in the modeling that you will see momentarily, this will be included. There are two options to model connectivity matrices. Next slide is showing you the first uh, uh, option. If you go to the next slide, please. So this is aligned with whatever we just discussed in the, in the framework. For the sake of the argument, because they say, what is the connectivity matrix? The intention here is that we try to say there each color is one connectivity matrix. So in a single, IETF network slice. Again, the assumption here is we have an only single IETF network slice service. It contains four different kind of, uh, uh, metrics. Each color is one of them. Definitely, each one depends on the type of the traffic they send. They have multiple sender and receiver in the case of you know the, everything except point to point everything else it seems that most likely are multicast traffic but we have some argument before that it might not be the case but consider everything first first of all connection is one directional in the case of red and orange you will see in the picture that each one has one direction and the, in most cases each direction has different slo so multiple slo must be supported shall be supported by the model because upstream and downstream traffic most likely has different uh, SLOs. And from that aspect, it should be trivial to, uh, simple to understand that the multiple SLO shall be supported by the model. And here, the, the intention here is, the first option here is based on whatever framework described as a connectivity metric, any type of the connectivity, for example, consider the orange one. 
the single point-to-point, -point, one sender, one receiver is one connectivity matrix. Consider a matrix as one connection. This is the first option. This is what we the framework discussed. And on the right-hand side, connectivity matrix entry, uh, uh, the intention is to, try to uh, try to put some example here to at least give a context here. Uh, I see there is a uh, pretty key that wants to ask a question. But I'm okay, we can stop here. Go ahead with your question. Question, question. Um, thank you. Um, so, when you have the blue matrix on uh, blue connectivity matrix on the top, it, uh, I think you tried to say it, but I didn't catch it. Is it NSE is multicasting to NSE, NSE one is multicasting to NSE six and two, or is it? Two unicast, uh, no. Is it a total of three unicast connections? Um, no, or... this, is, this is the point uh, that we try to raise. Uh, for example, you can have multiple, and when I show the, maybe the second option that did be clear, but in this case, the V considered, this is considered as a multicast. One endpoint is sending traffic to all. Basically, from the data the path perspective, there is the data replication. This is one of the important things that, again, when we define connectivity metrics in framework, we consider when there is a replication in the data path, it's a kind of multi-point or point-to-point, -point, multi-point. Anything that has multi-meaning, there is a replication in data path. Everything else which is not, for example, point-to-point, -point, at the end of the day, you can have an end-to-end, -end, the multiple endpoint on the point-to-point, -point, but they are sending unicast traffic. They all each node can talk to each other, but necessarily traffic from one node goes to another node, and that could be from implementation point of view. You can have hub and spoke or full mesh, for example. But this is a clarity a clarification that we the the attempt was to put it here. Whether or not this is something that framework is going to address it very clearly, and we bring it here. This is just a. a intention so far, whatever we understood from uh, whatever we uh, discussed in the frame. I hope I and, answered and your question. You did, but um, I'm still a little confused because um, if you're trying to describe the con the SLOs for the multicast connection from NSE1 to NSE6 and NSE2 at the same time, but they're physically different distances, different you know fiber paths and different all kinds of things, how do you describe, say, delay? I mean, do you give the minimum delay, or because you know the the even though you're multicasting and replicating the traffic, the characteristics of the traffic over different paths will be different. So, how do you model the SLOs? Yeah, good question. And uh, if you go back to the right hand side, the third bullet is basically addressing that. So, each connection can have different SLO. So, whether or not we consider the connectivity in this case from NSE1 to 6 as one connection to NSE2 another connection, you can potentially have multiple SLOs. But maybe this is addressed in the option two. If we go with option two, this is the maybe clarify, we clarify that, but values or multiple SLOs should be supported. And I think you gave just an example of why we need that one. We want to have different characteristic uh, for each of those connectivity that you see in this picture with the different potential SLO, they might be the same. I mean, this is very trivial case, but they might be different as well. Uh, if you allow me, let me just go to option two and after that I take question. Maybe in the option two, we answer some of the question that you have. In option two, it's very similar. In the previous one, the ID that identifies a uh, connectivity matrix was a new uh, uh, ID that we introduced. It could be integer, could be a string, could be what have you. In this case, the picture is very similar, but just consider the red connectivity and black. This is a bit different from previous one. In this case, the red connectivity matrix has multiple NSEs that's sending the traffic. So basically you have a single red connectivity metrics, and in this case, the key is not only an ID, but it is the ID, which is red. In this case, blue, red is that ID. It could be integer or could be a string, and type of the traffic. With this one, 
basically you can address the connectivity block as well. Between two endpoints, you can potentially can have multiple connections with different SLOs. And one example is not the example. One example is, for example, in the ORAN for the 5G, they ask about having multiple TOS inside an end-to-end -end network slice. This is, again, one example that why we need a feature or a characteristic like this. But in this case, as I mentioned, connectivity metrics could be anything. I put it blue, red, but it doesn't mean necessarily is the a string. It could be an integer. It could be type of the class, whatever we, uh, we can uh, select here. It, it can be there, but just for the sake of the technology agnostic, we call it ID. Now I can go to Shofang's uh, question. Hi, Arida. The Hi. complexity uh, we are discussing here is the exact reason why I'm against multiple uh, connectivity matrices in a single slice. So the same feature and the same functionality can be achieved by multiple slices, and each of them will have only one connectivity matrix. That's my comment. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you are, uh, this is one point. And actually, the model that we have in the draft right now is exactly as you mentioned. The assumption here is we have a single connectivity matrix because of the reason that you say. If a customer wants to create connectivity blue, why they have to put in this one into network slice one? Create another network slice, network slice two, IETF network slice two, and put that one there. This is exactly valid reason. And this is at the group, we have to think about it, whether or not multiple connectivity metrics shall be supported or not. But either or is fine with the uh, modeling, but this is the model this way because of existing uh, framework which addresses this way that multiple connectivity matrices shall be supported. Hey, uh, Reza, you, you have exceeded the allotted time. Can you rush through the remaining slides and then take sure. questions? Let me just uh, if we can. Can. Okay, no problem. So let's go to the next question. Uh, uh, next uh, slide, please. Uh, sorry, the Italo, we can take your question at the end. So th there are other aspects. For example, uh, there is one uh, discussion about the network slice connectivity group. And the whole idea here is, and um, if there is an endpoint sending traffic to multiple other endpoints, maybe, maybe the aggregation of the characteristic, for example, each one sends uh, one gig, but accumulatively, the total traffic should not exceed above a certain, uh, certain amount. Uh, in this case, we need to introduce network slice connection group. Again, this is under discussion. We uh, the, we uh, will be uh, providing more information in the uh, mailing list. The next topic is tag. Uh, if uh, if you go to the next slide, please. Multiple SLO should be supported. Again, this is a discussion that we went through it. This is more information why it is the case. What are the use cases? Support of multiple SLO is one aspect that uh, uh, is needed to be uh, completely clarified with the connectivity metrics. Next slide is, I think, about the tag. Why we need tag? We used to have tag, but it was removed uh, based on some comments. So we believe that co-authors believe that there is a need for having a tag, which is a kind of association, quote unquote, between network slice, uh, ITF network slice, and higher layer consumer. Again, this is uh, we'll be discussing the mailing list, but just uh, gives a heads up that this uh, will be one. And I think I I have one more slide at the end. Uh, but, uh, so there is a discussion about how. The, uh, from the northbound, the underlay information in some cases will be given to a network slice controller. Maybe the, the operator, maybe the orchestrator sitting at the top knows how to realize the transfer of slice in the network. Is this possible for that to influence network slice controller to specify the underlay and how to do it? This is one aspect, again, it needs investigation, but I think it's a good thing to discuss it, whether or not it's needed, it depends on use case, this might be 
uh, relevant to our discussion. And from that, uh, uh, I, uh, I'm done. Uh, and uh, we need uh, more let's discussion. One, yeah, yeah, let's take one quick question from Italo, and then we can move to the non-working group documents. No problem. Italo, please. Can you go back to slide six, sir? Keep yeah, I think in this case, uh, uh, well, it doesn't matter. In my opinion, if you allow this situation, uh, when you get a packet from the access link, uh, you have uh, three three steps. Uh, the first step is you have to know which access link the packet is coming from. The second step is you have to say to understand whether the, the packet belongs or not to NSA number four. And then you have a third step. So you have to understand whether the packet that goes from NSA number four to NSA number eight should go over the red or the black. So you have a three yeah. types of criteria that you have to configure for traffic classification. While with option one, you have only two. <laughs> you have to understand the, the link and then whether which NSE the packet belongs to. And this, I, I think, is the key difference between the two options and have to be clarified in the framework. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. So the, this one addresses the very last portion that you mentioned. Uh, but anyway, your summary is correct. Thank you for your attention. Uh, back to you. Okay. Um, so next up, we have Tarek. Uh, this is the start of the non-working group draft portion. We're going to really try to stick to uh, the allotted time, uh, max 10 minutes, hopefully a little less, just because we've managed to fill up all the slop time with good discussion on the working group uh, uh, drafts. So, Tarek. Okay, thank you. Um, um, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm going to give an update on revision four of uh, uh, the solution to realize network slices in IP and MPLS networks. Um, I am talking on the behalf of the co-authors, and I th thank all of them for their contribution. Next slide, please. So, my update, uh, well, the agenda consists of the updates, I'll go in details about each one on the slide, and then I'll close off with the next steps. Next slide, please. So summary of the updates, before we go deeper, uh, I've, uh, we went ahead and incorporated the new term network resource partition. This has been debated on the T's mailing list and agreed on. So we went ahead and, and incorporated it in the, our solution. Uh, we have expanded on the steps required to uh, to realize the solution uh, for IETF network slices in the in a in a transport network using our solution of slice aggregates. And uh, lastly, we have addressed the review com comments from several working group participants. Uh, I will talk more in detail about each one of those. Next slide, please. So it's a uh, network resource partition. It's useful to you know, uh, flash some of the uh, uh, terms that we used in our uh, solution uh, document. Uh, first, slice aggregate, uh, a collection of packets that match a slice policy selection criteria and are given the same forwarding treatment. A slice aggregate comprises of one or more IETF network slice traffic streams or flows, the mapping of one or more uh, of such uh, 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 streams or flows uh, into an aggregate is maintained in the IETF network slice controller. The network resource partition, uh, our understanding of it is a collection of resources that are used to support the slice aggregate. And uh, lastly, the slice policy is a construct that enables the instantiation of uh, the behaviors on the select uh, topological elements, the enforcement of the slice policy on those uh, elements will result in the network resource partition. What I want to highlight from these three uh, definition of three uh, terms is the network resource partition is instantiated on a set of nodes and links using policy. The network slice controller is the one that aggregates the IETF network slice streams into and forms a slice aggregate uh, or a grouping of those streams. Uh, the slice aggregate traffic streams share a, a common set of SLOs and uh, consequently are given the same forwarding treatment by the traverse nodes. And lastly, the slice aggregate traffic is steered on the specific network resource uh, partition associated with this slice aggregate. 
Next slide, please. Uh, as I mentioned, we have introduced a number of steps in no, uh, no definite order. Uh, we're not uh, dictating a specific order in order for uh, realizing the ITF network slice service. Um, uh, I'll just go over them one by one, but, but not in details. I'll, I'll leave uh, interested uh, parties to go and read our draft for uh, the specific details. So we talked about network topology filters, slice aggregation mapping, uh, path placement on the specific topology associated with the slice aggregate, uh, the slice policy installation uh, or instantiation of the uh, network resource partition, path instantiation, service mapping, and uh, relationship between different uh, network slice aggregates. N next slide, please. I mentioned that we got some review comments and we did address them in this revision. Uh, we thank all who uh, have read our draft and gave comments. So Jimmy and Robin had uh, provided some comments and we've addressed uh, some, uh, some of those. Uh, they were mostly editorial nits. Uh, last IETF 111, uh, Zafar had uh, some feedback to incorporate uh, uh, some of the SR building blocks draft um, that he had uh, into our draft and he 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 did signal an intention to join uh, we took from our side we took an action item and uh, we addressed uh, this we did try to incorporate some of the building blocks uh, related to SR in our draft and uh, we've given Zafar a chance to review the the, the updated revision we're still pending uh, any feedback from him uh, maybe he didn't get a chance to review the latest revision, but we did give him a chance to do that. Uh, lastly, <clears throat> uh, we did clarify the relationship of uh, our solution to DiffServe. Um, we are um, highlighting that DiffServe is not mandated by our solution, but if it is enabled, it will allow us to do or to support multiple classes of service on the same network slice or same, uh, sorry, network resource partition, uh, i.e. hierarchical QS, uh, support for hierarchical QS. Uh, next slide, please. You go so there, the authors... Before you go there, if you go back one sec. Sure. Um, so there's actually been a little mail, uh, I think, about Zafar's draft and um, uh, it looks like there's room, there, there's still not closure or alignment between this draft and is that what Zafar is looking for. Uh, if you can have that discussion at play out, that would be great. Um, and feel free to have it on the list. And so the working group is understanding what's going on. But uh, Zafar, at least on e email, says that there's more to do. And if we have time if, uh, at the end, maybe we'll uh, give him a chance to talk. All right, thanks. Sure thing. No problem. Thank you, Lou. Uh, in terms of next steps, the author, uh, authors think that the document is ready to be adopted. <clears throat> we do welcome further review from the working group and any feedback is also welcome. Thank you. Jimmy? Tariq? Yeah. Yeah, uh, first of all, thanks for the update. I uh, saw some comments from our side. And uh, I think uh, one, of the, one of the major issues left is about the termin terminology. I think following the consensus from the discussion, we will prefer to use the generic terms for the slice realization in the end delay so that it, it is related to the the terminology like the slash policy, slash policy topology, slash modes, policy modes, etc. Um, another terminology uh, I have raised the comments in the mailing list is about the slice aggregate. I think uh, it's the usage in the text has been changed to network resource partition from this version. And uh, I think uh, uh, it is important to clarify what it means and also clarify where it should be used and how it should be used in the uh, draft. Thanks, Jimmy. So let me clarify the 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 definition of slice aggregate in the in the current revision, it's clear the slice aggregate and network resource partition um, play different roles and they are distinct. And uh, 
and it's clar uh, clearly stated in the draft what each is uh, what each is playing the role of each. Uh, now, if you still have any uh, ambiguity, please raise it, and I will try to address it definitely. Uh, in terms of terminology, we did, in you know, align with what uh, the working group has proposed in terms of natural resource partition. Um, we we feel that uh, we, we, we there was uh, co-authors think that it's it's uh, it has uh, quite an important role to play, and we we uh, we feel. Uh, uh, it's important to keep in the solution, uh, uh, but I'm welcome to hear more uh, um, feedback is also welcome. Do the next two quickly, please. Me? Hello? I can hear you, Robin, go ahead. Okay, uh, Tarek, in fact, uh, Jamin from Huawei, uh, in fact, I propose my uh, comments about the uh, terminology slice aggregate uh, in the mailing list. So that is my uh, original understanding about slice aggregate is the underlay network slice. But uh, uh, but now it seems to change to that to identify this the net, uh, network slice stream. But uh, I I wonder the uh, I, I I have uh, this. Uh, is a little confusing. Even in your slides, you mentioned that that is the uh, slice aggregate topology. I, I don't understand how to define topology for a group of the streams of the network slice. And uh, the second one, I, I think that the another draft mentioned that the slice aggregate augmented to cope with the problem of the APN. I, I'm not sure that's what's your, the scope of this the slice aggregate. Is the identifier of some of the flow, or, or is it just uh, uh, confined to some of the specific uh, network slicing related things? I, your voice yeah. chopped up on my side, so I, uh, uh, I restate the question on the list if it's not already covered, and to take the response to the list. Um, yeah. Zafar, if it's super quick, uh, please go ahead. If not, please respond on the list. Zafar, uh, it's gonna be super quick. Yeah, so I we I had a discussion with Tariq, uh, but we have not reached uh, an agreement, and uh, we are seeking a uh, working pivot option for the building block draft uh, as well. Well, if so we're gonna combine the documents, it's better to combine the documents and then uh, move to working group adoption of a the, the unified document. Um, so let's see what happens with the. Uh, your the work to to bring these two documents together, and again, feel free to have the discussion on the on the uh, on the list if that helps. And thank uh, you, Tarek, Thank you for the presentation, everyone. Thank you for the comments, and we have to move to the next slot. Thank you. Hello. Can you hear yeah, me? Okay. Uh, hello everyone, this is Jido, and I'm going to give an update about the uh, scalability considerations for the VPN class on behalf of the co-authors. Okay, next page please. Or oh, can I control it? Okay, uh, a quick recap of the VPN plus and the VTN concept. The VPN plus framework is described in the TS enhanced VPN draft. Uh, one of the typical use cases is to deliver ITF network slices service. And the a VTN is a concept uh, which consists of a set of dedicated or shared network resources, and it is associated with a customized logical topology. The VTN can be used as a virtual underlay to deliver the enhanced VPNs and VPN plus service. Uh, as shown in the figure on the right side. We can have multiple or one or multiple VPN overlay services mapped to one uh, specific VTN uh, as a virtual underlay. And with the widely deployment of the network slice services, uh, the scalability of the VPN plus and VTN becomes an important factor to consider in the solution design. So this document provides scalability considerations of the VPN plus and VTN it uh, analyzed the scalability in the control plane and the data plane 
and also propose optimization mechanisms to improve the scalability. Okay, next page. Okay, so uh, here are the proposed scalability optimizations for the control plane. Basically, it is suggested that uh, we can uh, use a shared control protocols instance or session among multiple VTNs so that we can reduce the overhead for the session maintenance and also for the information uh, distribution in the network. The second point is uh, we can uh, try to use a shared topology, uh, shared topology specific computation among multiple VTNs. When there are multiple VTNs with, uh, uh, associated with the uh, same topology, they can use the shared SPF computation result for the uh, for building their forwarding entries. And the third point is we can rely on the hybrid control plane, which uh, with the help of the con centralized controller and the together, it can use together with the distributed control plane for the path computation, for the information distribution, so that uh, we can balance the load between the controller and the distributed uh, uh, control plane. Okay, uh, next page, please. For the data plane scalability optimization, the proposed mechanism in this document is uh, try to decouple the resource identifier from the topology specific identifiers used in packet forwarding. So the general approach is we can use a separate identifiers to uh, identify the topology and the destination or the path. In the, and uh, in addition, we can introduce a dedicated identifier to identify the uh, resources uh, associated with the VTN. Uh, based on this mechanism, we can instantiate it uh, in the different data planes. Uh, for the IPv6 data plane, we have proposed to use the IPv6 hub by hub extension header to carry the VTN resource identifier. And there's also a discussion in the uh, MPRS working group and other working groups about how to can ca carry this information in the MPRS data plane. Okay, next page. Uh, here we summarize the updates in the latest version. Uh, first, we update the descriptions in the abstract and the introduction so that it aligns with the update in the enhanced VPN and also the update in the ITF network slice draft. Uh, we also refine the descrip descriptions about the scalability requirements about the VPN plus services and the underlay VTNs. Uh, the description about the data plane scalability and the description about the data plane optimizations are also refined. Uh, we also add the security consideration section in this version. Next page, please. Here are some uh, history about the VPN Plus and VTN drafts. Uh, we have proposed that the enhanced VPN, uh, VPN Plus framework in uh, two, 20, uh, 2017 and has been adopted in the 2019. Then we proposed a segment routing based uh, VPN plus and VTN mechanisms in 2018, and the work has been adopted in spring uh, early this year. Uh, the SR based mechanism is suitable for the small or medium scale network slice scenarios. And then uh, after that, we propose this scalability considerations uh, for the VPN plus in uh, early uh, 2020, and after that, we have four updates in the past 20 months. So that uh, we also have the solution work based on this uh, scalability considerations and optimizations ongoing in other working groups. So on the right side, this shows the relationship between this work and the uh, network slice work in the NTS working group. So we have this general framework, describe the concepts and the overall framework for the slice uh, service. Then we have the realization uh, based on the VPNT and other technologies at the VPN Plus framework. Then for the realization, we can have the either the SR based mechanism for the slice realization based on the resource aware segments. Uh, we are, can also have this uh, high scalability network slice realization based on this uh, scalability optimizations and the data plane resource identifiers introducing different data planes. Okay, next page. Uh, for the next steps, uh, we think uh, this document provides the, a detailed scalability analysis and optimizations for the control plane and data plane of the VPN Plus and VTN. It's complementary to the scalability considerations in the VPN Plus framework, 
and provide guidance to the protocol extension work. Uh, uh, re regarding the terminology in this draft, uh, we think uh, uh, based on the recent update of the ITF network slice draft, uh, we can refer to the generic term network resource partition uh, in that draft, and uh, we can clarify that the, the VTA in this document uh, in the context of the network uh, mapping plus is uh, equivalent to the network resource partition in the context of ITF network slicing. Um, based on the scalability mechanism, we will collaborate on the protocol extensions based uh, in the uh, different control protocols uh, with other draft authors. And for this draft, uh, the authors think uh, this version has been stable, so we would like to request for the working group adoption on it. Um, thank you. Comments? Uh, we have time for couple of quick questions, Tara? Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Hello? Yes. OK, thanks. Um, um, my question, I would like to see more alignment with uh, the terminology that the working group has, is adopting. I think you're ra raising that. Uh, so network resource partition uh, should uh, be used instead of VTN. And I would like to see VTN go away uh, um, before we uh, call this ready for adoption. And uh, second uh, point I have is uh, uh, we, I don't think uh, adding VTN ID in the packet or carrying the ID itself inside the packet uh, is too restricted, restrictive uh, to associated to the, uh, we, we can have multiple mechanisms or selectors to, ma to map traffic to one network resource partition. The, you are mandating carrying an ID inside the packet and yeah these are my two questions feel free to I, and i'm willing to take them offline if you want on the mailing list okay maybe a quick uh, uh, reply uh, may i yeah regarding the terminology i think uh, we have agreed to refer to the generic term uh whether it should be a replacement or a reference that determine it de is determined by the relationship between the slice work and the VPN plus work which we may, we may discuss uh, further offline and uh, for the uh, id based mechanism as i mentioned we can have either the segment routing resource aware seed based solution which is uh, suitable for the small or medium size network slices uh, the id based mechanism is uh, can improve the scalability and i think this is also what you you have uh, described in also the, in your draft. So both mechanisms can be used in the data plane, right? Okay, so uh, we're out at the end of the slot. I apologize to the person in queue. I thought we would have time for them. Um, if you can take the list, that would be great. Um, I uh, will take the discussion on working group adoption to the, uh, to the list. Um, I think if, uh, anyone who has objections, please don't wait for the adoption call. Please start talking about it right now. Uh, and the um, uh, the point on alignment is is quite important. Uh, the VPN plus can have work have scope outside of slicing. So you know, think about that as you're doing your update. Um, with that, we're going to move uh, to the next. It is uh, I think is it uh, Tarek again. And we're going to cut you down to nine minutes because we each slot's running a little over. Thank you. <clears throat> I think I may I may give you back some minutes here, but but I don't see the slides yet. Okay. Um, so this is the update on revision two of the slice policy Yang data model. Uh, again, on the behalf of the co-authors. Next uh, slide, please. So the update is straightforward this time. Um, we did incorporate the network resource partition. Uh, I did talk about that in my earlier uh, presentation. We replaced, uh, uh, previously we'd, we had an SAID uh, to identify the network resource partition ID, uh, uh, partition. We have introduced the NRP ID instead. And we've uh, updated certain leaf descriptions accordingly. Uh, um, we have made a, uh, a, a leaf ref uh, change uh, to align with the topology fil filter data model. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's basically a, a, a next path change uh, to make it uh, 
compile um, uh, absorb the top level uh, container uh, change. So these are the two changes that we had uh, in this revision. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, in terms of, uh, you know, we always uh, welcome further review and feedback to the data model. This is an important data model about, uh, sorry, about the slice policy that instantiates the network resource partition in the network. Um, uh, we request, uh, we think that the, the, the model right now is in a good shape to be adopted by the group. So we request working group adoption. Thank you. Uh, Duruv is in the queue and I'm happy to answer your question. Yeah, thanks, Tarek. Uh, Tarek, uh, I posted uh, my comments on the uh, on the chat as well regarding the terminology. And uh, the, right now we say basically the slice policy results in the creation of the network resource partition to support slice aggregate. So I think this, like the term itself, slice policy is not making too much sense now since we have, uh, like, you know, map, we don't map a, sli a single slice here. So I think we need to relook at the terminology once again. And even when we look at the Yang model, this part becomes quite confusing. So just a comment that like, you know, not just with this document, but the document that you presented earlier as well, that terminology is something worth looking at. And uh, second comment, like while looking at the Yang model in the section about PHP, where you are describing the rate and uh, shaping, uh, I, I think either we need to add a little bit more description or maybe use references to some other document which describes those things in a much better way. Because right now when you le uh, read the Yang model, it's not very clear how is this getting applied? Like, you know, this whole bandwidth, how is it getting applied uh, to a particular NRP? Uh, that's not very clear. So just think about those things would be my comment. Thank you. Sure, Duruf. Uh, definitely, uh, if it is thin on description, we will, we're willing to elaborate. And uh, on the terminology, yes, uh, we're open to, uh, um, you know, at least for the slice policy, uh, we, we had a discussion among co-authors and we're open if the working group thinks that calling it a network partition policy helps. We are willing to, uh, you know, uh, uh, to take that input as input, accept that. Robin? My comments is that the data model depends on the solutions of the data plane and the control plane. But uh, I don't think that the solutions of the data plane and the control plane uh, is uh, stable. So I mean that this dependency should be solved before this young model be determined. Um. <clears throat> I'm not sure why you want to couple, uh, you know, uh, uh, the data model with. Uh, um, I mean, uh, we, we are aligned with uh, with the slice definitions uh, draft framework, draft, uh, and we, we, we. If you have any points that you want to raise, uh, feel free. If we are diverging. <clears throat> my, uh, my comments are because of you, for example, the. For the IPv6 encapsulation or the MPRC encapsulation, to what, what, how to encapsulate the the uh, the ID, and also this uh, what's the yeah. and what's uh, how many bits for this uh, ID? So Robin, if you've read the the the, the oh, if you give it uh, a read, then you will see that we have covering multiple uh, options for. Uh, you know, having these selectors uh, um, uh, for IPv6 and MPLS as well. So multiple options are there. But that's is just my concern. Maybe there's no the multiple options. Mm, we have references to wh wh where each option is coming from. It's not, uh, yeah. So, I mean, we can take it offline and I can point out each okay. reference. Okay. Hi, Tariq. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. 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 Uh, I read the draft, and the draft is that uh, the slice policy model is also a controller model, right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, it can be a device and controller, correct? Yes. But uh, uh, the, the model, uh, 
current model has only one uh, bandwidth uh, resource reservation for each slice policy. So I'm thinking when instantiating and a network resource partition instance, do you think all links in a network resource partition instance uh, are all the same? Uh, so both uh, actually the model allows uh, you know uh, configuring different uh, bandwidth profiles for different parts of the topological elements in the network and this is the reason we introduced topological filters or topology filters so you can in in the model you can say my uh, blue part of the topology i want this much bandwidth for this uh, uh, network resource partition and in my red um, admin groups, uh, and this is just an example. I want a different bandwidth, so it allows you to do that. Oh, that's not quite clear in the model, because right now the okay it uh, also regarding the like like control you you use you mentioned in the model that uh, there could be have a controller playing uh uh like a uh, mod mode and also some data plane mode but uh it seems that network resource partition only have a uh, controller control plane and uh resource uh and id but i don't see that there are some data plane resource uh like uh, associated with this network resource partition there so is, there i is think that plane. is missing there no, no, no. It is a data plane resource reserve. I mean, data plane data plane resources are part of the data model, and I, uh, you know, I'm happy to point you to that. Yeah. Okay. Hope hope there will be a more example to show how in three modes how we can uh, uh, doing that. Okay. Yeah, maybe your point taken. I think we need examples about how do we do each one of those uh, uh, points you're raising. Thanks. Okay, well, uh, thank you very much. Um, it seems like there's some good uh, opportunity for follow up on the list. And uh, we'll ask the, the folks asking questions as well as the authors to try to take that, you know, continue the discussion. Um, I believe, uh, Reza, you're up. Uh, yes. Uh, on behalf of the co-authors, uh, I'm going to present uh, one of the application of the ITM network slice in the context of 5G and in a specific how the mapping uh, should happen and uh, what are the options that we have. Next slide, please. Uh, but if we look at the general uh, the management of the in 5G into a network slices. In this example, and as discussed in the framework document, I think it's important to understand 5G is one of the applications or the use cases of ITF network slice. As a technology, it was clearly defined in the framework document that ITF network slice is a technology that provides various use cases. One of the use cases, 5G, and in a specific, in the context of the 5G, the way that end-to-end -end network slice from the left, if you look at the bottom uh, picture from left, which is your UE, it could be your cell phone, your IO, uh, IoT device, could be CCTV and what have you, to the right-hand side, which is a UPF and which basically addresses the uh, connectivity which is needed for that UE to the network. So from this perspective, it is really end-to-end -end context. It has various domains, RAN domains, transport domains and the 5G core domain. To create this end-to-end -end network slice based on the 3GPP, this is a kind of summary of whatever is proposed. There is an entity sitting at the top and you see the acronym on the right-hand side. Basically, there is an orchestrator sitting at the very top, which is orchestrating creation of end-to-end -end and delegating it to the access network AN, to the transport, which is ITF network slice controller, and to the core, which is the CN. Whatever you see in NSSMF is basically the controller. So any acronym with NSM means AN controller, domain controller, or CN. I'm simplifying it, but the idea here is 
orchestrator at the top send the request to create access a slice core slice or a n slice uh, the, it, there is a typo here it should say c n slice so identify and it sends a request to it network slice this is a discussion that we had for last hour or so to create quote unquote connectivity between them so the whole idea here is that there is one identifier from the 3GPP and from the end-to-end -end context, it's called Network Slice Selection ID, SNSSR. This is just an 32-bit number. It has a semantic, but for the, our discussion, consider that there is an ID which is used during the signaling from 3GPP, from the UE to the network, which identifies the whole end-to-end -end network slice. So from our side, how we can take from the transport specific, how we can take this ID as NSSAI to map it to transport and there should be same question for AN and CN but our discussion today is explicitly from the transport perspective so if we go to the next slide we try to basically formulate this question into more detail so you will see here that for an example there is an end-to-end -end network slice with the ID at the very top 0111 is a 32-bit number as I said it creates some AN slice access network slice and there is an ID allocated uh, you know with what the controller to that same thing there is some network slice uh, the ITN network slice will be created the ID is six and same thing for the uh, access uh, for the CN for the core network so the whole idea here is at the end of the day, AN is connected to the transport network through the a network of PEs, and same thing, CN is connected to PEs. The idea here is when the traffic from the AN, look at the data plane, the bottom line, uh, bottom portion of the CA picture. When the traffic arrives from the AN, it should have some identifier. This identifier, we call it IDA because there is no specific uh, agreement what that should be and what the acronym should be but consider that one as a itf network slice internet working identification that packet comes to the network to the pe and pe knows how to map that one to itf network slice with a specified with the id again we put idb because we can uh, discuss what that uh, should be uh, it seems that there is a question. Uh, I can take the question right now if it's related to this uh, slide. Uh, Kurteki, please. Um, so you're saying the IDA is in the data plane in the packet as opposed to a conceptual identifier? I mean, it's possible that the PE could say, I'm going to use a five tuple, you know, a IP, IP five tuple or incoming interface and VLAN ID to do the mapping instead of having an actual ID in the packet. Uh, yeah, but from yeah. what I hear, you're saying it's an ID in the packet. No, not. I didn't imply what are the solution. What, for example, you mentioned VLAN. This is one potential solution. This traffic, which is coming from AN to PE, potentially will have some identifier, whether or not is in the packet, IP packet itself, because at the end of the day, that traffic which is coming in 3GPP term, they call it GTP tunnel, but it's basically nothing but IP on top of UDP. So potentially that IP can come with a VLAN and that VLAN is identified. We are not implying that there is an ID internal to a packet and the whole draft try to basically formulate the options that we have. I'm uh, just doing the time check here. I, I go with the try to finish the slide and if there is a time we can take question uh, at the end. Let me just okay. go to that question. But it's a very important question that you ask. We are not implying that there is a specific ID attached to the IP. What are the potential solutions that we have is basically addressing the draft. If you go to the next uh, slide, please. So uh, there are some updates uh, that happens uh, to the uh, version 4. There are lots of uh, detail added. Some of the terminology, which is not really needed, uh, has been removed or revised. And I'm encouraging people to take a look at this one. You know, there are fresh uh, look at the problem. as well. We try to align it with the ITM network slice draft and basically simplify it as well. 
If you go to the next slide, there are some clarification about some of these as much as uh, I have time. So you will see here that the whole idea of the, the creation of end-to-end -end network slice, assume that this is these three colors that you see here, there are three end-to-end -end network slices. The whole idea here is when the traffic goes into one of these, the, let's pick the green one. When the traffic from the access side comes to the ITF network slice seven, what are the characteristics of that IP the traffic which is coming and what can specify I need to connect to the, the network slice green versus blue, for example. This is the whole idea of the uh, problem statement that this drive tried to address. This is just an example of that. If you go to the next slide, the clarification between whatever uh, on the left hand side, the picture that you will see, this is the view of the 3GPP that there is an orchestrator sitting at the very top. There are three controllers for three domains for the access, for transport, for the, for the core. The terminology that we use, I, the attempt here is to map it to whatever we understand. Basically, from the perspective of the, the transport side, the IETF network has a controller quote unquote, that TNN SSMF is equivalent of that. And anything sitting at the very top is just an orchestrator. In our terminology, that entity is the consumer that the versus customer. This is one of the, the topic that uh, Adrian also mentioned. But at the very end, there is an entity sitting the northbound of the network slice controller, and there is something south one. So from our side, basically, we are addressing only whatever is happening at the IT and network slice control. And this mapping is clarifying or mapping what that we have. So we have only maybe uh, less than a minute to finish up the thought here. If we can quickly go through the slide. Next one, please. Uh, so there are two IDs. ITM network slice identifier. So what is that ID based on what Tarek and other mentioned? We have to come up with that ID and also internet network ID. These are the two IDs that we have. And if you go through the document, if you go to the draft, now we said how we can map these two ID together. One example is whatever that uh, mentioned. For example, VLAN is one, but it's not the only option. There are various options discussed in the draft. And the whole idea here is we are not imposing any specific the mapping is just trying to list all the potential problem, potential solution that uh, exists today. And in this context, uh, we just uh, trying to put everything together. And for the, uh, if you go to the next slide, we are uh, seeking more uh, comments. And uh, also the, 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 the real thing that we are in reached a stable in the part, which we are aligned with the ITM network slice uh, draft the framework, and we are seeking for the, the next step and potential adoption. Thank you very much. And I don't know if we have time to go through one question with uh, Loe, but uh, if it is, please go ahead. No, uh, Loe, you might just want to speculatively jump in before we're into the queue on the next I'm, one. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to make the topic. Yeah. Yeah. I apologize. Yeah. Yeah, let me make um, comments real fast, if that's what you want me to do. I mean, then we can take it off the list, or I can do it on the list. Uh, go, sure, make your comment, and then take it, the response off list. So I'll tell you, you need to, you know, from the picture I see, N6 interface, I don't see how it applies to the F1U. I mean, see, yeah, the N3 interface, I don't see how it applies to N6 and F1U, so that's one thing to consider. Another thing to consider, you might have multiple DUs talking to a CU, multiple CUs talking to UPF. If you understand this, take your model. When somebody mentions VLAN, make sure you understand the use case before you propose the solution. So we can talk offline, but let's try to apply to the use case to see if this is efficient or not. Definitely. We, uh, I simply point here, but we can talk if you want. Uh, we can have more detail on that. But uh, yeah. the point is taken. Thank you. And, and please continue the discussion on the list. I believe there was interest in a, in a uh, past meeting in this document. We had a, uh, you know, uh, gotten some indication from the working group there's interest in this work. Um, so please discuss it on the list. and. You know, I think we're headed towards adoption, uh, but we're not quite there yet. Uh, moving okay, on. Thank you. Robin? Okay, yeah. Uh, this is Jim Bin from Huawei. Uh, my presentation is the framework for end-to-end -end ITM network slicing. Uh, next slide. 
Okay, here this is the background. In fact, this has been uh, talked uh, many times in the previous section. So here this is quickly. So the first, uh, that's the, <clears throat> there's the drought from the design team define the concept and the general framework of IETF network slice. And also we have this uh, realization based on the VPN plus and the uh, VPN plus and the VTN. So this is, uh, we also have the SR based VPN plus mechanism. Uh, and uh, now that's uh, because uh, uh, in the past work, uh, major is for the single domain, but uh, because of the uh, deployment of this the network slice, so that IETF network slice may span multiple network domain. Uh, in each domain, traffic of network slice service is mapped to a local uh, VTM. So this uh, document is to describe the framework for realizing end-to-end -end IETF network slice. Uh, next slide. Okay, so here this is just uh, this is the brief, this introduction about this three system. This is about this framework uh, for the realization. We have this uh, SR-based uh, network slice realization. Uh, now that's uh, we also have the scalable network slice realization to decouple this uh, network slice and the uh, topology. Uh, now that is uh, for the end-to-end -end IETF network slice realization to implement uh, IETF network slice spanning multiple network domain. So this is the uh, draft. Okay, next one. Okay, so here this is just uh, this end-to-end uh, -end, uh, uh, net, uh, IETF network slice. So here I say that this uh, <laughs> The top layer, this is the 5G end-to-end -end network slice, which is identified by the SNSSAI. So that's in the transport network segment, the 5G network slice can be mapped to an IETF network slice. Uh, for the IETF network slice, uh, it can be realized with multiple domain VPN plus service. And also in the underlay network, the multiple domain VPN plus service is supported by a multiple domain VTN, which is comprised by multiple intra-domain VTNs in the different domains. So here we can we have this the different layers of this the ID, so that we have this the 5G network slice ID SNSSI. And also we have this the IETF network slice service spanning multiple domain. That is a global uh, VTM. And for each uh, domain, we have this is a local uh, VTM. Okay, next slide. Okay, so here this is just summarize this identifier. So that's is uh, for each domain a local VTN is carried in the packet to identify a set of network resource reserved for the VTN in the corresponding domain. We also for the we also have this global uh, VTN ID. So this uh, so this is the global VTN ID uh, is a global value uh, for spanning multiple domain. It can be mapped to a local VTN uh, in the corresponding domain. And also for the 5G, uh, we have this end-to-end -end network slice ID, SNSSAI. Uh, in the previous the presentation, uh, the <coughs> interworking uh, between the uh, 5G network slice and the IETF network slice, uh, it can use the existing encapsulation, uh, such as the uh, VLAN, uh, et cetera. Uh, here, this introduces another method, that means this uh, SNSSI can be directly carried uh, from this the run to the IETF network slice, then to the uh, mobile car network. Okay, so for this the IDs, so that's the local waiting ID is mandatory because <coughs> this is uh, must be forwarded in the uh, in each domain. But for the global waiting ID and the 5G SNSSI. For the spanning the different domain, uh, 
this IDs are optional. <laughs> okay, next slide. Okay, I will, uh, here this is a requirement of the end-to-end uh, <coughs> uh, -end IETF network slicing. Uh, so this is the data plane. So that's the ID uh, will be carried, uh, can be carried in the data plane. Uh, so that's uh, is, uh, the waiting ID is uh, mandatory, but for the other uh, two IDs is uh, optional. Uh, accordingly, so that's uh, there's the corresponding the manage plane and the control plane the uh, extension. So that's uh, is the uh, based on the network controller. Uh, it can allocate uh, these IDs and uh, also set up this the mapping entries between the. Uh, global waiting ID and the local waiting ID, or is to set up this the mapping entries between the global waiting ID and the 5G end-to-end -end network slice ID. And that's the SNSS AI. Okay, next slide. Okay, so here are these updates. So this uh, version is uh, <laughs> Uh, was submitted in April this year. So the updates of this, uh, there are one version. So we refine the description of the VPN plus and VTN in network slice realization. And the new co-authors are added. Then there's some the editorial change. Okay, next slide. Okay, next slide. Uh, so that's the, <clears throat> so here we still use that's the, uh, realization terminology VPN plus and the VTN. So that's the according, <clears throat> uh, we will uh, align the terminology according to the rough consensus in the working group, such as the network resource partition. We will refer to this the new terminology. Uh, <clears throat> then we also go on to that's the solicit comments and uh, refine the draft. And also from our point, so that is the uh, concept is direct and clear, so as is almost stable. So that's possible. We would like to request for work group, uh, working group adoption. Okay, uh, that's all. Uh, I think we have time for question. All right, uh, Tarek, go ahead. Uh, sorry, the title drew my attention. Do we have a new framework for end-to-end -end network slicing? Oh, sorry, for network slicing? Is this a new framework? Uh, new framework. I mean, so that's the realization for the, uh, for the realization framework for the uh, ITF network slice uh, for the scenario, the spanning multiple domain. I mean, uh, why so that's the... Not, uh, I would have thought it would be covered by the the existing uh, network slice framework or definitions draft, but I mean, I'll let the authors of uh, or the editor to comment. Thanks. Okay, Tarika, that's just also my the question on that draft. I mean, so that's the scope. Uh, I'm not sure what's the boundary of that draft. It can you seem to can cover every the possible new things proposed. So I think it's a good action for the authors of this document to look to see what text um, they think is missing from the existing uh, working group framework document and propose text additions there. Clearly, some of the text doesn't belong there, like the applicability of VPN plus. I mean, that could go in the VPN plus document. Uh, but, it, you know, it's it, it's a rather short and thin document. It would be good to just understand its applicability. Um, you know, how much of it could be uh, taken and put into the framework rather than have a, a whole new standalone document. Um, so that's a request from the chair. We could probably take the response offline on the list uh, if you don't mind. Thank you. And with that, uh, is it Pavan? Are you up? Yeah, I think. Yeah, that's me. Um, so this is not a slicing presentation. Uh, so I think I've gone past all the slicing presentations for the day. Uh, so this, in this presentation, we are introducing a data model draft for uh, discussing topology filters. Uh, the 00, 00 version for this was published before IETF 111, but this is the first time that we are presenting it in a working group session. Uh, I'm presenting this on behalf of 
my co-authors Tarek, Rakesh, and Shufeng. Uh, the topology filter construct was originally defined as part of the slice policy model, but given its generic applicability, we decided to publish it as a separate standalone module. Um, as the name suggests, uh, topology filter is a filtering construct that can be applied uh, on a native topology or on a, or, uh, on a predefined customized topology. The result of this application is a filtered set of topological elements. You could use the term filter topology for this as used in other documents. Um, as part of this document, we are also introducing a construct called a topology filter set, which is basically uh, a union of um, uh, topology filters that can be applied uh, in tandem on a topology. Uh, and also, as you would expect, the data model introduced in this document uh, is applicable both on a network element uh, and uh, on a controller. Uh, this is uh, an illustration of the high-level model structure. The data tree includes a list for topology filters and a list for topology filter sets. Uh, the top-level container that is being augmented here is the networks container from the ITF network module. Uh, the initial thought was to augment the routing container, but it has been uh, rightly pointed out, I believe it was Bo who pointed that out, that routing container is a network element only construct and um, and that we need to augment a top level container that can exist, uh, say both on a network element as well as on a controller. So that's what we have right now. Um, so the next three slides, uh, they talk about topology filters container. Thank you. Uh, Okay. Let me run through. I mean, I don't have many slides. I'll just quickly run through and I'll take the question. Okay. Um, this is uh, so uh, the topology, uh, each topology filter entry in the list uh, specifies a set of include any, include all, and exclude filtering rules that can be applied on either the native topology or a customized topology. Uh, the, the topology, um, each topology filter entry, it may carry a reference to the topology on which the filtering rules need to be applied. Uh, if there is no reference present, then the filtering rules ought to be applied on what constitutes uh, your so-called native topology. And as indicated here, the reference topology could be uh, a predefined T topology, RFC 8795 topology, uh, and or, or a, a specific IGP domain. Um, the topology filter entry allows you to also specify um, a varied set of attributes as part of the include any, include all, and exclude constructs that can be used as rules to filter the topology. We have had uh, some asks to add a few more attributes to the filtering rules, and um, there was also an ask to inc include exclude all. Uh, we will be looking to do that in the next revision. Uh, if the entry does not carry any filtering rules and only references a, a specific topology, then uh, the reference topology becomes your filter topology as is. Um, the topology filter set construct, uh, it, this comes into play when there's a need to create a union of multiple topology filters. And as you can see here, each topology filter set entry carries a list of topology filter references. Um, so this is still uh, early days for the draft. Uh, um, the authors do believe, however, that the document is sufficiently cooked to progress to the next stage, but the ask for now uh, to the working group is just to review the document and provide feedback. Um, that's it. I'll take questions. Sue? Am I hearable? Okay. Yeah. Clear questions just to set context. Uh, to compare and contrast with the existing work. Mm -hmm. So, you have routing filters, lots of them in good routing models. You have lots of flow filters in BGP. And then you have this topology filter. Could you compare, con contrast, and give me examples where each one fits? Thank you. So, the topology filter, the mandate is very simple. I mean, uh, there are a couple of use cases. Uh, think of any computation profile. Uh, today, we do pass in a topology and say compute a path within the topology. But uh, say you have a customized topology, and on top of that, uh, you want to do the computation only on a filtered set of elements, uh, you can apply a topology filter. Uh, you uh, the other use case which we, for which this was originally put together was uh, like 
uh, it was presented earlier with slice policy you uh, if you have a network resource partition that has an associated filter topology you need some way of saying this is these are the filtered set of topological elements on which uh, your uh, slice traffic needs to go through so that that with all, is mm -hmm. with all deep respect for your expertise tell me why that isn't just repeating to me you've just done routing policy i i, I must be missing okay. something because everything you've just said is equivalent to routing policy if and you can which point creates me, if you can point me to a data model that mirrors what i've just explained where you can reference the topology and say uh, filter it using so so and so filtering rules. Uh, I, I'd be happy to just reference. If you it. look I, at the I body of BG, if you look at the body of BGP models, you will find they do that. I, I think we're talking. I, I thought I asked something that was a fairly simple question, but unless you've unless you take up the BGP policy work uh, and uh, all of its ramifications which is implemented here in other places it constrains routes if you're constraining topologies of peers that's a different thing but i can't tell whether you're constraining topologies of peers topologies of end nodes i really can't tell what this is doing and i thought i asked a simple question for understanding and i'm pointing you to several bodies of work so i'm confused vishnu with the with the deepest I, of respect for your expertise i will take a look at those uh, references that you provided but uh, the last time i checked i couldn't find any uh, any data construct that i could use to apply on an existing topology and get us uh, get I, a filter set of topology elements. I'm I'm asking a very um, high level question, and my question then is, what's your background on policy routing? I, I I'm not trying to. Oh, I'm not trying to be negative. Are actually talking past each other. That's um, what I'm thinking, Lou. So I guess yeah, I'll I think, be I go think, away. You know, so uh, yeah, so I'm I think really... you know what you're what you're focused on is about um, uh, routes, while what mm -hmm. uh, Pavan mm -hmm. is talking is focused on is topologies, and maybe we should have some references on the list to to no, show. No, Lou, know. that that is incorrect. I am I am asking the high level question that says, have you looked at the combination of work, and it's. And, and you I know, think policy... he said yes. I mean, I, I accept that you, oh, you may not uh, okay. accept the answer, then... but he said he answered that question by saying he looked at it and didn't think it was appropriate. And so I'm happy to look okay, at them. Okay, then again I guess I'll, I'll policy. object that this I think is is missing a body of work. And I guess the only thing that, rather than getting an answer, I can do is say, thank you very much for entertaining my questions, and I object Lou, to the work. Thank you. Right, and, and this is, and we can have, we can continue the discussion on the uh, on the uh, list. I'll, I'll raise it with my AD. Thank you very much. Sure. Um, all right. Um, with that, unfortunately, Dhruv and Loa, we do not have time for your questions and the last presentation. So I think we should move on and ask you to take the question to the list. Apologize for uh, the time management there. Okay. Last okay. Uh, Jimmy from Huawei. Uh, this is the new uh, topic, uh, the intent-based routing. Okay. Next slide. Okay. So here, this is the some of this the introduction about the background. In fact, the seamless MPRS SR has been proposed uh, to describe the requirement for end-to-end. Uh, intent-based paths so spanning multiple domain networks uh, and corresponding the protocol extension of the BGP has been proposed. Uh, but we know that the uh, because of seamless MPRSR, 
uh, the this interdomain SR path need to set up according to the pair, uh, color, and and the point. Uh, that means more SR paths need to be introduced uh, in multiple domains. So this this will cause more challenge on scalability. Uh, so in order to reduce the scalability challenge introduced by the interdomain routing, uh, so that's this document uh, proposed intent-based routing mecha mechanism. Uh, that means that the, <coughs> the intent information can be carried in the data plane. So the network nodes can steer the packet uh, into the SR policy or the underlying network slice to satisfy the service requirement. Uh, so that's uh, uh, the service requirement uh, means uh, specific uh, intent. Okay, next slide. Okay, so here this is uh, the <clears throat> uh, some uh, introduction of the concept. So this uh, first is the color. So that's the color is used, uh, is defined in the uh, segment routing policy. So that's a color is used uh, is a 22-bit numeric value that associate the SR policy with the intent. So it means that's the, for example, the color means this is a low latency. Uh, that's for the SR policy. Okay, under the intent, uh, this is a new concept introduced by the intent-based routing mechanism. So this is the intent information uh, is uh, carried in the data plane. This is different from the color. That means associate the SR policy uh, in the control plane. So that's is because they uh, both of color and the intent can represent some of this the uh, intent uh, information. So there can be mapping uh, between the intent and the color. So here, this is a figure to show that the intent X can be mapped to the color Y if they are has the same meaning for specific intent. Uh, besides this mapping, because the color is always used for the SR policy for the steering traffic, uh, the intent is not confined to the color. It can be used for other purposes, such as network measurement and security, et cetera. Okay, next slide. Okay, so here we can see that the for the uh, <coughs> for the uh, inter-domain uh, network, so that's the for the uh, for the network node uh, at the edge of the each network domain, the SR policy group can be set up. The SR policy group. Uh, includes the mapping between the colors and the SR policy for a specific endpoint. So when the packet arrived at the edge of the network domain, it can, according to uh, the destination address in the packet, to search the SR policy group uh, that's uh, for the endpoints. Then, according to the intent information in the packet, map to the color and according to the uh, mapping between the color and the policy to search, uh, get, to, get to the SR policy. So that uh, can steer in the packet into the corresponding SR policy to satisfy the uh, intent. Okay, next slide. Okay, so here this is the color used for the underlay network slice. So that's the same, the color uh, mapping, uh, uh, the, the mapping between color and the local underlay network slice can be set up in the data plane. When the packet arrived, based on the intent information in the uh, packet, it can be mapped to the corresponding color, then corresponding to the net, uh, corresponding underlay network slice. So then we can steer the traffic uh, into the uh, underlay network slice to satisfy the intent. Okay, next slide. Okay, so there's the, some of the advantage. So this is the scalability. So this is the mapping between the intent and the SR policy can be done locally. 
uh, without the need of advertise the label binding for the pair color endpoint to stitch, stitch the SR path uh, pass in different uh, local domains. A second uh, that is the flexibility because the intent can be satisfied by the different solutions. For example, the intent can be satisfied by the SR policy or the underlay network slice. So for spanning multiple domain, so the one domain can use the SR policy for the intent. Another domain can use the underlay network slice for the intent. So that we can flexibly to combine these solutions uh, for the same intent. So this is uh, uh, achieve the advantage of flexibility. Uh, last Robin, I've lost audio. I'm not sure if yeah, everyone else has. I think we lost Robin. Um, I think we are at the top of the hour. Yeah, I mean, th this is uh, interesting new work. Yeah. Um, I'm not 100 percent sure it belongs in T's, and um, unfortunately, that was I was going to uh, ask that as a presenter. I'll have to take the comment to the to the list. Um, we're, we are pretty much out of time. I see Loa, you just joined the queue. Go ahead. I just wanted to say that I think that this, for the time being, it actually belongs here in Tees. It has a strong traffic engineering uh, possibility, I think. Um, I, I think we're okay with it being here for now, but we'll continue to track and coordinate with the AD. Um, uh, we are, you know, so it, it, it's early work, so I'd like to hear more about it and see more discussed on the list. Okay, uh, sure, thanks. Yeah, no, thank you for the comment. Um, uh, given where we are on time, we should uh, wrap up. Uh, Pavan, is there anything you want to add before we close or even close? No, um, yeah, the, we had a great meeting. Thanks to Adrian for uh, all the time that he put in. Uh, yeah, we did ask for extra time, and I think we managed to fill it in. Uh, yeah, thanks, everyone. Uh, see you next time. Thanks, everyone. Bye.